Good evening, brethren. I come before you tonight with thanksgiving in my heart because our God is able. Everything that we're going to be talking about this weekend, if God wasn't able, what would it make? It wouldn't make a difference. We'd just be out here spinning our wheels. But God is able. He's shown us that he's able. He doesn't have to show us. But he has shown us. He's gone out of his way. This is how good our God is. See, we are a fragile people. I recently have experienced how fragile I am. Brother Ricky told you about how my family has gone through a sickness like we've never had before this, this week. Incredible. I've never, six kids, we've had some sicknesses, but I've never had this before. And I watched each one of my family members, and then, then I, it came on me. And I thought, well, this is not a good time for this. So I'm preparing God is able to present the brethren. And here I am, last night, about ready to tell my boss, I don't think I'm going to be able to make it in. But I'm preparing God is able here. So I said, Lord, I know you're able. I know I'm fragile, but I know you're able. I woke up this morning sore, but I wasn't sick. You know, the Lord does that to you. When you're preparing something, when you give yourself to him, now, I don't need the brother, each one of them is who's speaking, all those who, who live for the Lord, God has done this in different ways and different, but it's like the Lord will speak to you sometimes and say, do you really believe that I'm able? Or are you going to listen to the world? Because they make excuses for everything. They'll tell you why this isn't going to work and that's not going to work. And they'll, they'll say, they'll give all kinds of reasons for us to be timid and scared and upset and worried and distressed. When all along our God is able. Amen. Before we ever had any ideas in our mind about who we are or where we, before we, we even came into existence, he was able. He knew what we needed before we ever knew what we needed. So here, this is Ephesians, before I continue on here, Ephesians 3.20 says, Now unto him that is able. Able to do what? He's able to do what? What can he do? What is it? Well, let's see. He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. So I thought about that. I thought, he can do more than we ask or think. This is a high matter we're talking about. This is a, a higher level of thinking that is not automatic. You just, you, you got to really give yourself to the Lord to be able to see this. You can't just go floundering around in the world and giving yourself to the world and to be able to see this clearly. First, the problem we have here is we have our flesh to contend with. And if you're not contending with your flesh, if you're not waking up every morning and saying, flesh, you will go on the cross today. Because I am going to serve my God who is able to keep me. If you're not doing that, you're not going to be able to see this. Second, we are working out our own salvation in an arena that makes it hard for us to see the work of God. So daily, after we crucify the flesh, we still are going into an arena that it, can, it continually bombards us with doubt and things that will make us wonder, can God do what? I mean, this is daily. It's, it's a moment by moment. As soon as you, your feet hit the ground, 
you're going to have to continue with it. Again, if you're not continuing with it, well, then you're just giving in to the, thing, the flesh and the world, and it'll just overwhelm you, and just next thing you know, you'll be wondering, how did I get so far away? I, was, I felt like I was on track. I felt like I had things going for me, but all of a sudden, I'm out, I'm out in left field. Wait, how did this ever happen? Well, brother, because we got a lot against us, but our God is able. It takes a relentless effort daily on the part of the believer to see the hand of God at work. You are involved in this work. And you, you must press in to be able to see that God is able. But when you do that, when you see that God is able, what's going to hinder you from being an overcomer? What's going to hinder you from getting all the way from here to there? Brother, I'm, telling, I'm here to tell you nothing's going to stop us. Because our God is able. A tender-hearted believer can be stabilized as they see that God is able. As we consider God being able to do above all that we ask or think, Allow me to look at a few things, present to you a few things. Now, God, like I already said, God has shown himself able throughout time over and over again. He's, he's established things. He's set things up so that he can show that he's able. He has made things, situations, impossible so that he can show that he is able. He goes out of his way in Scripture to make the impossible possible to show that he is able. First, I'd like to look at, I picked out a few, a few things here, but first I'd like to look at the widow in 1 Kings 17.10. She's about ready to prepare her last meal for her and her son, and then they're going to die. That's just the way it is. I mean, it's not a pretty situation. She knew she was going to die. There was no more food. That was it. We're going to eat this and die. Well, you, you know what happened. The Lord intervened. The Lord made the food last longer, showing how he can provide. Showing how he is able. But he didn't stop there, did he? Now, you, you can just, just look through scripture. You can see this. I, I've been able to see this more and more recently, how God will take a, a, a bad situation. He allows it to get worse so he can show that he is able. Amen. Amen. So it didn't stop there. The son got sick. Now, did God heal him? He died. He died. Elijah cried out unto the Lord. The Lord heard the voice of Elijah and the soul of the child Amen. came back into him again and he revived. Amen. That's not even possible. Can, can we even, scientifically, can we even say that that's possible? No. I mean, let's get our facts straight, brethren. You can't do this. But God is able. See, we don't go by scientific bumbo-jumbo. We go by the God who is able. Amen. This was not hard for God. He was able to do this. This is what, I'm picking out some easy things for God. People sometimes, they want to bring somebody back, but they can't do it. Somebody who they love and care for. They really, I mean, this is generally love and care for them. They would like to see them come back. They can't because they're not able. If they were able, they would do it. But see, you know, brother, our God is able. Let me bring up another example. I want to bring up an example of how compassionate and merciful our God is. He's not only able, he's also compassionate. 
Luke 7, 12 says, The Lord had compassion on a widow as her son was carried out of the city. He had died. He was her only son. Jesus told her, Weep not. He told the, the son that had died, Young man, arise. And he stood up and began to speak. Again, this is not, you're not supposed to be able to do this. You can ask any scientist nowadays. They'll tell you, this is not right. We can take a vote on this and they'll, they'll tell you. The vote will come back. No, you can't do this. Jesus said, I can do it. I can do it because I'm able. And many people were there when God had visited his people. Because the only true God is able to raise the dead, brethren. But see, this is not hard for God. I'm picking out easy things here. Luke 8.54, he told a young maiden who had died, now, what are you gonna, why, what's he talking to this young maiden for? She just died. But it says here, he told her, Arise! As he took her hand, and her spirit came again, and she arose. Now, as, as if that is not enough to see that God is able, he has given us many examples all throughout the scriptures, over and over again, and we still today have people say, that God is not able. Well, they may not say that, you know, they won't. Some people they do. But God is able. After all that we've seen, there'll still be people that they still will not look to God. Why is that? Is it because God is not able? No, it's because of this flesh that we have, it's because of sin, it's because of corruption. One more, one more example of a small thing that God has done. John eleven forty three. Yeah. Now Jesus, He waited this time. He waited a good. Yeah. He waited a good while to make sure that everybody knows this is no trick. Now, <clears throat> you, that's how the world thinks. You know, they'll say this. Oh, He wasn't really dead. Yeah. He just He was in a coma or something. Uh -huh. See, Jesus. God knows this, so he waits a good while. He waits, and he cries with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he did. Although these are all small things for God, God doesn't stop there. Now, brother, oh, every one of those examples, they died again. They, they eventually died. The people died. So these were, these were God showing us. There is no other reason for him to do this except for his compassion, his mercy, and for him to show us that he is able. Why else did he do this? It's for us to show us who he is. Because we had a problem that was bigger than just dying. Dying is not our biggest problem. I mean, when you talk to the world, they'll look at, I heard this before, they'll look at what happened with Noah and they say, I cannot believe God did that. All those people. Well, see, because the world, this is the way they think. They think dying is the worst thing. In their mind, they think death, that's the worst. But it's not. That's not the worst thing. You know, when God's people came out of Egypt, it displayed that God was able to save people. But this was not the end either. That was a great work. Who else could do this but God? To have 
to take an empire like this, that for 400 years they were in place, it looked like nothing could, nothing could shake up this empire. He got it, purposely did this. He established this empire. He made it strong and secure so it would look like nothing could change this empire. He did this to show that he is a saving God. That he can take a situation that looks impossible and overnight turn everything upside down just like that. Turn it upside down and take his people right out. He was, he's making examples here. And then just to add to that, just for, you know, just to show that he is able, he took him right into the Red Sea. Where's the boat? He had a boat before when he saved the people, but this time we got no boat. Well, this time I'm just going to part to sea. Who thought of that? God. He didn't know what he think about it. He was able to do it. For men, it was far above what they could ever think of or even ask. But still, this was not the biggest thing. God's, he's, he's gearing up for uh, something greater here. No man ever thought God would save his people by parting the Red Sea. But you know what, brother? Did anybody ever think about how God was going to take away sin? Well, how would you do that? Let's take a vote on that. How are we going to get started here? Since we live in a country so happy and so eager to take votes on everything because they think this solves everything, how exactly are you going to take away sin? Well, for men... This is impossible. But for God, nothing is impossible. God planned it all out and was able to do this plan of salvation flawlessly. Up to this point that we're in now, it's flawless. And he's continuing. Nothing can stop God. Men may, they may bark and they may kick and scream and say, there is no God. And, and they, they make up all these different ideas. And stuff. That doesn't change God. That's what we're talking about this weekend. It doesn't change God. Go ahead, kick and scream. What I'm doing is flawless, God says. You can't stop me. It doesn't matter what you say. But see, the good thing for us is we see it. That's how good our God is. He's opened our eyes up. In this evil generation, God has opened our eyes so that we can see it now, before it's too late. Because mm -hmm. we're talking about being able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think. Think about this. We have died with Jesus, been buried with him, and have been raised with him. How is that even possible? Because God is able. Jesus submitted to death. He conquered the dominion and prince of death. Because he's able. Now God made Jesus sin. I, we, just, <laughs> we recently covered this in a men's meeting that really helped me to see this kind of solidify it in my mind. God made Jesus sin. Jesus never felt the pains of sin. He never, he never had, you know, we have regrets. We wish we would have did things differently. Jesus never did that. He never regretted anything. He never wished he did anything differently. He did everything perfectly. Yeah, flawless. All the way to the cross, which made him a perfect vessel. To be used by God. God was able to make him sin. And place. All. Of humanity's sin. On him. He poured it out into him. So that it could be taken away. 
See, we, we know that God is perfect. We know that he, he, can't, he can't be around any sin, not even a little sin. He can't be in his presence. So what, what do you, how are you going to do this? How are you going to take care of it? Well, he's doing this in Christ. And I, and I was able to, to think about this more when we talked about this in our men's meeting. I thought about, yeah, he had to have a perfect vessel to do this. It couldn't just be anything. It had to be right, a perfect vessel. And he made him sin because Jesus couldn't do it because he was without sin. He made him sin to be able to carry out. You know, today we have all types of <clears throat> different types of trucks and stuff that move things around. Well, you don't put, you know, waste in a milk truck. You don't put milk in a waste truck. See, there's, there's different things you have, to, you have to do it right. And I saw this when God was doing this. It was a vessel that was able to contain it and to take it away because it had to be taken away. And Jesus did it. It was something that had to be done and through Christ it was done. We couldn't, ask, we couldn't ask for this. How, what would we even know what to ask for? This is above and beyond what we could ever think or ask for. Right, brother? Amen. Did we ever think about this? No, God did. This, this can bring rejoicing in your heart to see how good our God is. God planned it all out and was able to execute it flawlessly. Unlike an untold number of innocent animals that died under the law, Jesus died once yeah. for sin. He got the job done. Yeah. Brother, I, I myself have tried to take on jobs before and really, really, really wanted to get it done. But because of things that come up and things happen. I've got all kinds of projects in my house because if things have come up, things have happened, I just haven't been able to get the job done. But see, this is a job that had to be done. And Jesus was able to do it. Amen. Now, our death is not just because of sin. Because of sin, death came. But now, we look at our death, death we look forward because it's a doorway into eternal life. Now as we wait and we look for the return of Christ, God has taken our stony heart and given us a heart of flesh. This heart can be enlarged by God. See, this is how good our God is. This is what, this is what I'm trying to say here. Not only is he able to do, but he's good, righteous, merciful, and holy. And he's doing those things which need to be done. Amen. God is working in us. We are joined with God who is able to finish what he started. See, we, we sometimes we start things we can't finish. But God is able to finish what he starts. Amen. As we re, re, remain in fellowship with Jesus, God is able to bring us all the way to glory. Although we are involved in this work, we were not able to save ourselves. We could not do it. No matter, no, it didn't matter how bad we would ever want to be with God. There was no possibility for us to ever to be in his presence. We could cry. We could want it. But there was no possibility. But because God is able... He made it possible. Amen. Amen. As men, we're not able, but we do have this guarantee that God being able is working salvation through Jesus Christ. John 3, 35 says, The Father loveth the Son 
and hath given all things unto his hand. He's done this so that he can make a way that we could be with him. So that we could be a, a people with him. It's good, brethren, to think about these things. It's good to think that, you know, our God is not only able, he's making this happen for us. 86 times in Scripture, you'll read in Christ, by Christ, through Christ. He's doing this in Christ. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. It's Hebrews 12, 2. It's good to know that he can finish it. It's good to know that he is going to take this all the way to the end. And then we're going to be able to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. 1 Peter 3.18 says, For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Now listen to this, brother. By which he also went and preached unto the spirits in prison. Can he, can he do that? Yeah. Yeah. Who would have thought of that? These are, they're, they're, these are the ones, they're already, they're already gone, right? You can't go, once you're gone, you're gone. Death is the end of it all, right? Not when God is able. Not when he's a good and able God. There's not going to be a small number in heaven, brethren. There's not going to be a small number. You know, you might look around at times and think there's a meek, a little number. Just a, it's a small number. But it's not a small number. It's a very large number. A number that cannot be numbered. But you, know, you know why that is? Why is that? Because God is able. He went and preached to the spirits in prison because he's able. He can do it, brother. Yes, he is able to do more exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. And thank the Lord that he didn't ask our opinion on this. This is exceedingly, abundantly, above anything that we could ever ask or think. Amen. You ask somebody what they want, and it usually ends up somewhere down here in the in earth. Yeah, yeah. Even if they're trying to think of something really high, it usually doesn't make it very far. But our God did. He's already thought of everything. Yes. He not only has thought of everything, he's taken care of everything. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do now, right? What we need to do now is to stay faithful. We need to give ourselves to him. Mm -hmm. And you push yourself. Recently... The Lord just worked this out in me. I was about ready to call my boss and say, I'm not going to be able to make it to work. And then it hit me. I'm preparing a sermon that God is able. And I'm thinking, I, I can't make it. So I went to the Lord. And I said, Lord, help me. I don't, because if I'm getting what these guys are getting, my, my family, if I'm getting what I just saw thee had, I'm not even going to be able to preach tomorrow night alone go to work but see he's not only able in the small things like that he's able to bring us all the way to glory thank you brother